Good morning, Unity Atlanta. We are going to sing The Best of What's Around by Dave Matthews Band to start things off, and it's a little reminder to appreciate who you're with in these times. So feel free to sing along with us wherever you are. Surround. Woo! Thank you, Johnny Barrett, the Tower of Higher Power Band, Simon, Cam, John, and Johnny. We're so delighted. Welcome to the first Sunday in May. We're so grateful to have the Tower of Higher Power Band, to have you, beloved virtual community, tuning in with us this Sunday morning. And so allow me to greet you by saying namaste. The spirit in me welcomes, honors, embraces, and truly rejoices in the spirit in you. And let us begin as we do all things with prayer. Today we affirm the power and the presence of God, divine creator of all things, which has created us in love and continues to love us into being. Today, as beloved virtual community, we open ourselves more fully to experience this awesome presence in our lives as we pray with all those who seek healing and as we pray with all those who contribute to the divine healing process. As we move into the heart of this spring season, we dig deeper into the heart of life, our own lives, and the lives of all others too. We look around us and behold the wonder of spirit in, around, among, and through all things, all experiences, and all opportunities. Today, as we begin to discern how a new normal might look, we consider all the choices before us, knowing that we are free in the spirit to embrace our lives anew. And for all the blessings we're experiencing in these moments, we are truly grateful. And let us say, Thank you, God. Would you say that with me wherever you are? Thank you, God. Amen. So again, we're so delighted that you've tuned in with us this morning here at Unity Atlanta. We are a positive, beloved community, a spiritual path that reminds each and every one how valued how divine, how worthy and deserving we each are of living beautiful and joyous lives. And so we remember that power and presence of God in, around, and through, and especially that divine presence within us. And so we affirm that presence. We know that presence of God as the power in our lives as we affirm together this morning our statement of faith. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in our lives. God, the good omnipotence. And so we know that power we feel that presence of God, the spirit within us, as we share together in a time of the reading of our daily word. The daily word for today is taken from a classic daily word from another time in 1935. The daily word for today that we share together on this first Sunday of May in 2020 is way of spirit. And the affirmation is the spirit of the Lord 
now directs me to the path I should take and guides me on my way. And the daily word reading for us for today says, I am free from the habit of indecision. When I have a choice or a decision to make, I choose or decide accordingly to the prompting of spirit. I decide wisely and well. The Spirit of the Lord designates the best thing to choose, the best path to take. When I go the way of Spirit, I know that Spirit guides me and makes my way one of peace and plenty. The path I select when spiritually guided is sure to lead me into joy and success. The way of spirit is the way of light, the way of peace, the way of joy, and the way of plenty. The light of spirit shines upon my way and reveals all things to me. Every barrier to my progress is removed when I go the way of spirit. Having chosen spirit's way, I cannot be hindered in my advancement. The path of spirit leads me into the very blessings of heaven. As I go spirit's way, I know that I am led into the realization and fulfillment of all my desires. I am perfectly satisfied when I go the way of spirit. The way of the Lord now opens up before me and I see clearly ahead. Again, the daily word for today is way of spirit. And the affirmation is the spirit of the Lord now directs me to the path I should take and guides me on my way. And so it is, and so we let it be, the truth for us this day. And as we move into a sacred time of guided meditation, our Tower of Higher Power Band prepares us with, I release, I surrender, I let go.
We surrender, we let go. As we move now into this sacred time of guided meditation and wherever you are in our beloved virtual community, I invite you to be comfortable in whatever way may feel best for you, gathered with loved ones, stretched out in the sun, cuddled with a furry friend. Release, surrender, let go, as together in these moments we make way for spirit, that way of spirit that is opening for us as we release, as we surrender, as we let go easily, gently, of all that we have held on to in these moments. We release, we surrender, we let go, and allow that presence of spirit to flow through us now, guiding our way, guiding our steps, guiding this next part of our journey as we grow further into the heart of life. We make way for that power for that presence of God to do its wondrous works. We release, we surrender, we let go breathing deeply into any place within our bodies that feels tight or tense. Breathing in to body, mind, and spirit that urge to hold on. We breathe that breath of God, releasing and relaxing. We are at peace as we allow spirit to lead us on the way and we allow those wondrous paths to open for us now as we rest for a few moments in the silence.
the way of spirit guides us, directs us, leads us forward on this wondrous journey we call our lives. When we travel the way of spirit, we find the gentle steps. We feel the power of God in all our decisions, in all our choices. We are in the way of spirit and spirit leads us on paths of peace and paths of plenty. We see the wonder of spirit in all our choices and we are truly grateful. And so it is, and so we let it be. Amen. And now, an inspirational teaching from May Rowan, director of Silent Unity from 1916 to 1971. Responsibility builds character. From a collection of her writings called The Magic of the Word, from their chapter titled Individual Responsibility. And May says, one of the chief cornerstones in character building is responsibility. This characteristic spells the difference between failure and success. In all the affairs of our daily life, someone must be held accountable. Most of us feel that it should be the other person. We are sometimes accused of being a nation in which few people do original thinking. We would rather let someone else take responsibility and do our thinking for us. It is easier to play the game of follow the leader than it is to be the leader. We do not like to make the mental effort necessary to set us apart as an original or independent thinker. Society as a whole does not like to be bothered with new ideas. When someone presents a new idea, the mass mind immediately challenges with the statement, it can't be done. Of course, you know what happens next. Someone proceeds to do it. In the middle of the night, many, many, many paths ago, I dreamt that I was standing in my galley kitchen 
surrounded by broken glass. It was one of those dreams that seemed that it must be real, that kind of lucid dream we have sometimes where we're sure that we're awake and that this is the end of everything and that we are paralyzed and can go no further. And every time I looked at that glass around me, I felt riveted to the ground. What could I do? No one could come to help me. I was alone. Any step I took could cut me to smithereens. And somehow, in the middle of the night, in the middle of this dream, I made myself wake up. And I went to the kitchen to be sure that there was really no broken glass there, and of course there wasn't. And try as I might to return to sleep, that image of that broken glass remained. I was grateful in that time that there was a trusted mentor teacher. I could say, I had this terrible dream that I was paralyzed in a pool of broken glass in the kitchen. And she did that wonderful thing that our mentors and friends and teachers will do sometimes and said, yeah, oh, so what'd you do? And I saw, I don't know, I made myself wake up. I couldn't do anything. And then we started to unpack the dream. And that was where all the possibilities and all the choices were for what we could do what she could help me do, and what I could do. And if you can imagine this little galley kitchen in this rented condo that I owned for a short time as a home that was a transition from one thing to the next thing, it occurred to me that the broken glass was like an image of a shattered life and something that I could no longer put together, but would need to sweep up to start again. And that mentor friend and I had some interesting conversations about, well, if you really were standing in a pool of glass, what could you do? Consider all the choices. If you, beloved virtual viewer, were standing in broken glass or standing around with anything shattered, experiencing a loss and looking at a new normal. And beloved community, In our own way, as we begin this month of May, it's supposed to be the merry month of May, but some of us aren't feeling very happy right now. We have the opportunity to release and let go and surrender. You know, we hate that part. We're going to surrender. I've done it. Haven't you done it? You know, it's like except those last two little fingers that are hanging on. Like, I'm not going to let go. I want to let go, but only that much. And so what we're realizing as we move into the heart of spring, as we continue this series that we've been sharing together, growing into the heart of life, that this is supposed to be the month of graduations and parades and the Kentucky Derby and uh, we were all supposed to go to a Braves game on Friday and all that used to be normal but it is not happening now and wherever you might be tuning in if you're in Atlanta then you might have seen that news that the normal for our 4th of July weekend the Peachtree Road Race is now going to be run on Thanksgiving. 
And it seems that every day, whatever used to be, whatever was normal, is not. And some of us are waking up daily. Oh, like with the dread, like what's going to be the news today? You know, we almost don't want to look. And the way of spirit reminds us that we can take this step by step. May Roland reminds us that our character is built by how we take responsibility for who we are right now. There's a story about May Rowland, who actually came on to work with Unity founders Charles and Myrtle Fillmore because the ministry was taking off and they had so much work to do, they couldn't do it all. And the story goes that May Rowland, a young woman at the time, went to Charles Fillmore several times for assistance in what she needed to get done. And one day Charles Fillmore said to her, May, the Christ spirit is within you. Now go use it. And she did. And beloved virtual viewer, listener, what I want to tell you this morning is the Christ Spirit, the anointed Spirit, the presence of God is in you, is in each of us. And each of us is responsible for using it to make those choices that are before us now. That we don't need to wait for someone else to do it for us or figure it out. In our state of Georgia and in a few other states, not all the leaders so-called agreed on the best steps. Not all the businesses are open. Everybody is considering, or almost everybody, that whatever we're going to do now is not going to be exactly the same as it was. And so we have this opportunity. Billy Joel, of course, who thought he wasn't particularly spiritual, wrote those fabulous lyrics that reminds us that we have mountains of faith to climb and Spirit says, but you don't have to catapult them all at once. It is a step-by-step -step process. We get caught sometimes in that idea of waiting for someone to figure it out for us. We'll check our feeds, the Facebook, the Instagram, the Twitter, what's this one saying, what's that one saying, what's the CDC's recommendation, the WHO's recommendation, the this recommendation, the that recommendation, and by then, we're caught in the jungle of doubt that Billy Joel wrote about because now what? Do I go this way? Do I go that way? Do I eat this? Do I wear this? Which mask am I going to have now? I don't know. We got some pretty cool choices. I've seen some pretty awesome masks. I think we got a whole new fashion trend going. Myself. Here's the thing about choices. The minute we make that decision that we're choosing something for ourselves, we're also choosing something that in some way or another is going to affect someone else. That that part of our character says that there's something for us here to do differently. But that when we, let's say, make that choice that when we want to go shopping, we're going to wear gloves and a mask, we're not just thinking of our own safety and well-being. We're thinking about the safety and well-being of the per persons in other aisles. 
the cashier who checks us out, the other person who's going to touch the bottle or the can or the thing. How many of us have seen the hashtag, we're all in this together? And so our choices remind us that these are universal decisions, like tossing that little pebble in the pond, the ripple effect extends outward. You know, and here's the thing about responsibility in the spiritual sense. Whether we've been working on this stuff for 30, 40, 50 years, pick your amount, to joining for the very first time this morning. We each get that opportunity to grow into the heart of life, to develop our character just a little more because the Spirit is within us and we know the way to go. And that text from May Rowland that she wrote sometime before at least the 19, early 1970s, in certain ways still speaks volumes about our nation and about our world. It takes effort to think. It takes effort to consider what the choices are before us. Oh, it would be so much easier if somebody else did it. Then we wouldn't have to be responsible. Like that image that used to come up in the cartoon by Bill Keen, the family circus, the not me goblin. You might remember it. And we hope we can have you see it, but if not, look it up later. The not me goblin. I didn't do this. This wasn't mine. I'm not responsible. I didn't make them sick. I didn't spill the milk. I didn't eat the last cookie. I didn't sneeze over there. I didn't buy 14 pounds of that and not leave any for anyone else. Not responsible. Not mine. Not me. You know, and then some of us will go off and we'll be very justified. Not me. I didn't break the vase. I didn't do the thing. I'm not responsible. Hmm. Or we sometimes tip it over all the other way, especially if we're working on our spirituality and we're trying to dig deeper into the heart of life. And there's sometimes prayers or affirmations that get said where we're responsible for everything and everybody. And if we just prayed hard enough, we could purify all of Wuhan, China, because somehow it must have been our fault. <sighs> Except that it wasn't. We're responsible and we're powerful, but yeah, take, take a breath. Not that much. And so on this Sunday, I want to shout out to our youth and family ministry, which is working with our power of power. We have powers, spiritual powers, abilities to learn and to grow. This month, we're looking at power. This is spiritual power, beloved virtual community. This is not the mighty, I'm going to take this, I'm going to shove this over here. Not that kind of power. This is the power of choice. This is the power of prayer. This is the power of possibility. This is the power that says, oh, I'm not in charge of all this. This spring has been an interesting journey. It's reminded me in many ways of the 23rd Psalm. 
that begins, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters and restores my soul. Some people wonder, well, why do you bring up the 23rd Psalm? It's not a funeral. The 23rd Psalm reminds us of the presence of God. The 23rd Psalm reminds us that the Lord is our shepherd, which means we're not in charge. We're not leading the whole flock. We don't have to figure this out all by ourselves. That we have choices that we have possibilities. As soon as someone says, it can't be done, there's the group of us that'll say, yep, you're right. Let's forget all about it. Let's just sit here. This is it. This is how it's going to be. This is the way it's always been. Okay, well, it wasn't like that. Or there's the group that says, oh, well, we'll just go right back to normal and it'll just be all the same and it'll all be all better and want to wipe it out. Or there's the group I invite us to join this Sunday that remembers that the Spirit of God is in us and that we have so many choices. Yes, I understand that some of us have hit that desert of truth. The desert of truth is pretty stark and bare. There isn't anything else that we can do unless we're willing to look at what the possibilities are in front of us. They are not the same for each of us, but they give us an opportunity to consider that the spirit that lives in us also lives in our brothers and sisters. Consider the character building in all the things that have changed in just the past couple of months. How many people are sharing food with one another? That insurance companies like Geico are, you know, where 15% or more could save you 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. They're giving 15% back. that Publix is buying food so that it isn't wasted and it can be shared with people who are hungry, that all over the world people are making masks for one another, that every lending company just about, banks, credit unions, are sharing resources finding ways to make our financial lives easier. That the city of New York, the Big Apple, is trying to figure out the best way to purify the subways every night. That all the sports venues are considering how we can still enjoy those games and still be safe. Each of us has lots, maybe hundreds of choices. 
I'd love to stand up here and tell you what the new normal is going to be. I can't. But this is what I can tell you. That beautiful 23rd Psalm, the Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want concludes with those beautiful lines, Surely I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever, that goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. In that presence of spirit, the choices perhaps become a little bit easier. I invite you, beloved spiritual community, to know that presence of God before you, beside you, with you, and within you as you choose whatever makes the highest and best normal in these moments as we travel together. I love you. Namaste. Reverend Jen, thank you so much. That's so pertinent today. And for the reminder that we do have the power of God within us. And we can choose how we react today and how we show up to co-create what the new normal will be. I have just a couple of announcements. Lots going on this week. The first one is that today the YOU uh, meet at 1230 via Zoom and the Unitines meet at 2 o'clock via Zoom. Tomorrow uh, we are having a new spirit group starting and it's at 7 p.m. via Zoom. You can look at the newsletter, the website, on the calendar to figure out how to log into that. Also on Monday at 3 o'clock for ages 5 to 12, Lachey is doing a moving meditation for the youth. On Tuesdays, we have the Spiritual Cafe with Reverend Jen at noon. And also on Wednesday this week, we're starting a four-week meditation series with Nikki Hardy. Nikki used to lead our NGU group, and she is back in Atlanta and ready to share her spiritual gifts. So that is Wednesdays at 7 p.m. for the next four weeks. You can find all of this information on the website, on Facebook, and especially in our newsletter. If you do not receive our newsletter, please go to unityatl.org, which is our website. At the top, there's a newsletter tab. You just click on it and then enter your name and your email address. And you'll automatically be added to the newsletter list. They come out every Thursday. So please um, join that and be able to see all the information available. And now I just want to say thank you. Thank you for continuing to send in your offerings, your tithes, your donations, mailing them in, paying online. And also, we have a new text to give. You can just text the word give to the number, not on the screen, but um, we'll put that out in the newsletter. And um, But just want to say thank you. Thank you so much for your generosity. Thank you for supporting Unity Atlanta, um, our beloved community. Now let's take our offering in our hands and hold it close to our hearts. Let's say our offering affirmation together. Divine love through me blesses and increases all that I give, all that I receive, and all that I have. I give in love because I am love, and I love to give. So it is. Amen. Away and you worry both night and day. Hand it over, lift yourself up and pray. If you're sick, feel low, got no money, nowhere to go. Hand it over, 
lift yourself up and pull you Hand it over, hand it over, hand it over, hand it over, give it up, give it up, give it over, give it over, hand it over, hand it over, lift yourself up and pull you. the way, the way, hand it over, hand it over, get on your knees, ain't no mountain that you can no answer that you can find All you need is a hand to hold It'll feed your body It'll feed your soul Give it up, give it up, give it over, give it over, hand it over, hand it over, get lift yourself up and pray. Thank you, John Ivy, Tower of Higher Power Band. One more time, John, Johnny, Cam, and Simon. Here every Sunday, we're so grateful. And we are so grateful, beloved community, that you are with us, that you made the choice this morning or whenever you're tuning in to be with us. We are so grateful.